This video looks at the difference in the speed of light as determined by a stationary observer in a Schwarzschild space-time versus an observer in a freely falling local inertial frame of reference. It shows how coordinates differ from physical measurements and how the two are related. It is an example of the equivalence principle at work as local curvature is transformed away or ceases to be significant for small regions of space-time. Alright, so here we are in a Schwarzschild space-time, a mass, and the Schwarzschild space-time is outside of it, and we have a photon, or photons on a radial path coming in from far away, R infinity being uh, far away, and we have an observer out at R infinity a long, long way away. Another observer closer in, it's somewhere closer to the source, but not far away. Now the Schwarzschild line element for this space-time is this object here, ds squared, is minus this, by c squared dt squared, plus then this bit by dr squared, and then r squared d theta squared, and r squared sine squared theta d phi squared, the angular part. For radial motion, the angular part will go to zero, will disappear. We're only interested in purely radial motion. And... Moving on now, we've noticed in a previous video we found that as the observer moves closer to the source mass, their light cones close up. So after infinity we found the, the space there has become flat in the asymptotic sense. And the limit as r goes to infinity, this metric goes towards that of the, the flat metric of Minkowski space-time. And the light cones have the speed of light being 1. Uh, the, the gradient that is of the light cone is 1 and but closer in the light cone closes up as we move in closer to the Schwarzschild mass there's a Schwarzschild radius here in blue we saw that in a previous video so that's just a reminder and just to quantify that a little bit further we look at an observer at R1 determines the speed of light to be dr1 dt is c times this object here and we find that to be at R1 to be less than c at infinity as r goes to infinity, as r1 goes to infinity, we find that dr dt is again plus or minus c. As space-time becomes asymptotically flat, moving further out. Alright, now, so to summarise that then, we have, an, uh, here we have our photons on a radial mole geodesic. An observer at r determines the speed of light to be dr dt as c times this object here in the Schwarzschild space-time. So remember that because we'll use this relationship a little later on. We'll substitute that into an expression that we will subsequently develop. So keep that one in mind. Alright, so let's say we have an observer in a laboratory that is freely falling in a Schwarzschild space-time. So here's our mass generating in Schwarzschild space-time. Here's our observer in a laboratory. And this laboratory is free to fall. It's freely falling under the influence of the... Um, uh, curvature caused by this mass here. So it's moving according to the curvature generated by this mass here. The observer is at rest with respect to the laboratory reference frame, and this observer wishes to measure the speed of light in his or her local reference frame. Now they are in fact intending to measure the speed of light in the small region of space-time that surrounds them, this very small region. And they wish to measure the speed of light. What speed for light does this observer inside the laboratory, which is freely falling in this space-time, what do they record? What is their value of C? Alright, so here we are inside the laboratory. The observer has a clock with him or herself. We have a coordinate interval dr, which is given by, we're going to have a light beam that's going to go from the source here to an, uh, from an emitter here, source to a receiver here, and the top of the uh, from this wall of the observatory to that wall. Now coordinate wise, the, sorry, the source down here has a coordinate R1 and this, the receiver up here has the uh, coordinate R2 and so the coordinate difference dr is R2 minus R1. Now dr is a coordinate interval given by R1, R2 and d tau is the proper time interval measured by the observer according to the clock that he or she carries with them and that's their proper time. So, what is the speed with which a light beam traverses from one end of this laboratory to another in the Schwarzschild space-time? Now, remembering this laboratory is freely falling in the Schwarzschild space-time. And just to remind ourselves of the metric again, here we are. 
Now the relationship between coordinate distance dr and proper distance ds is well it comes from ds squared is this object here. Now this measurement occurs at the same time. So this this uh, measurement is performed at an instant in time, and so dt is zero. And of course we had a radial mole pass, so the angular components all disappeared. And so all we're left with then is ds squared is equal to this part here. To find ds, the actual length, we need the proper length, I should say, is equal to ds is dr on the square root of this object here, which is square root of both sides here. Okay, so that's the relationship between ds and dr, the coordinate, the coordinate interval dr, and the proper length ds. Now, the metric can also be written as ds squared is minus c squared d tau squared, which is equal to, as we saw earlier for ds squared, that every long expression we had before. So we get now where we want to perform a measurement that occurs at the same location. So we're measuring this uh, time interval at the single location. We observe a standing in the laboratory there, so dr is zero. And we have minus c squared d tau squared, which is ds squared, is equal to the time component, the time part of the line interval. So that's minus 1 minus 2 gm on c squared r times c squared dt squared. The minus is cancelled. Um, divide through by c squared. d tau becomes the square root of this object here. Right? And 1 on d tau, which we will use shortly, is 1 over that object there. So just keep this in mind as well. We're going to use this shortly. Now just a point to the, again, the measurement occurs at the same location, so dr is equal to zero. So we want, so what we're measuring here time-wise is the time it takes according to the clock the observer is carrying in the laboratory. What, what time do they record for the light beam to, to go from one wall to the other? All right, so the locally observed speed of light, ds d tau, then becomes ds was equal to dr over this, and 1 over d tau was 1 over this object here. So ds d tau is this times this. Okay, remember the proper length ds was dr, the coordinate interval, over this, over the component of the metric, and times 1 over d tau, which was the time component of the metric, square root of that times dt. Now, collect the increments together, dr dt, here, times 1 over this object. Now from earlier on, remember I pointed out you need to hang on to this, there was a relationship, this dr dt we found to be for this object here, for this stationary observer in the, in the Schwarzschild space-time. dr dt was this object, and that times that, or that and that cancel out. And this observer in the laboratory records in their local inertial reference frame, they record that the speed of light is c. So the locally observed speed of light in the laboratory by the observer who's within this laboratory that is freely falling within the Schwarzschild space-time and the observer is at rest with respect to the laboratory and records, he or she records the speed of light in that laboratory to be c. That's the local speed of light. Now, the speed of light measured in the laboratory is equal to c. And this is to be expected because the curvature in this small region of space-time is negligible, so that the observer effectively finds his or herself in a region of flat space-time. Think of the surface of the Earth. Looked at from space, the Earth is highly curved. But if you're standing on the front doorstep of your home and you look out along the street, then to you it's quite flat-looking locally because you're only seeing a small local region of the surface of the Earth. And for you it's quite flat. Now, so the region, so that the space time in the small region in that laboratory is has negligible curvature. Now that means the observer in the laboratory is in a locally inertial reference frame, as the equivalence principle leads us to expect. And the equivalence principle tells us that in a freely falling, non-rotating laboratory that is occupying a small region of space time, small, the laws of physics are those of special relativity.